tell me about George Luscombe. Tell me about him. George Luscombe was the, one of the most frightening uh, directors. Mm -hmm. He was very gruff and very intense. And he, uh, you never really knew how beautiful his vision was because you were so busy obeying him. Mm -hmm. He'd put you all on stage and he'd make you move around the stage with all those energies of different dynamics, the speed, weight and direction of the efforts, you know, slow, fast, you know, uh, indirect, direct, all those movements that we were doing. Um, and he would really, I mean, was very intense and quite gruff with us as we, it was like boot camp, right? Mm -hmm. And then he would bring a script in that had some kind of social meaning, social political meaning. There was always that kind of part to it. And um, he had, by this time, by the time we were working on the script, we could feel how theatrically epic we were capable of being. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, 12 actors would burst into, you know, an energy all together. Um, so, you know, when he brought the scripts in and the playwrights in, we really dominated those scripts. Those were, it's actually a lot of those scripts could not get even published because they were sort of much looser and much more fragmented at the time. And Jack, um, Jack oh, hmm. Winter, mm -hmm. right? Jack Winter, he brought a lot of scripts into George and he knew that George would meet those scripts with the kind of dynamics of the actors, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so we'd create sort of dynamic images around the scripts and uh, we used a lot of music. We're always going, you know, learning. I, I had to learn how to play the trombone for one play and, you know, and I played a bit of, a bit of accordion, a bit of this, a bit of that, I played the mm -hmm. trumpet, that kind of stuff. The drums. Actually, that's one of the things I liked about my husband, Jeff, Jeff Bronstein. When I first met him, he was sitting there playing the bongos. Mm -hmm. Is that the little ones? What are the little ones? The bongos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was going, ba -doom, ba -boom, ba -boom. I said, oh, that sounds fab. Are you a drummer? And he went, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out he never, he never really drummed in his life. No. And he was like, what were some of the things that you took from George in your own work? When I started... I left George's company, we went to, Jeff and I were both hired to be part of this, theater, um, this television series called Story Theatre, which was all about creating stories almost improvisationally with a live band, it was really exciting. And we were hired because we could kick off our shoes and leap into action and be physical actors, mm -hmm. right? We throw ourselves into character and we do anything. Mm -hmm. From there, um, we auditioned, we both of us were in the same company, we auditioned for the St. Lawrence Centre Company and Leon Major was the artistic director. And he said to us, I love to hire actors out of Toronto Workshop Productions who have been trained by George because I don't have to direct them, they direct themselves. Mm -hmm because we could feel space, we could feel how to fit ourselves into things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but the biggest thing that happened when I started to direct plays, I discovered that George, George's training was in me, mm -hmm. and I wanted to share that, to share the kind of energy, the energy of actors, a community of actors on a stage, mm -hmm. and how do, how do they bring an energy alive as a community, of, as an ensemble? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't stop thinking about George. And I, he would come and visit me and see the shows that I was directing, mm -hmm. actually, which was great because he never went to the theater. He thought theater was crap. That the only theater that was any good was his own. <laughs> of course, well. Yeah. And Joan Littlewood, where he came from. His mm. history was Joan Littlewood in East End, London. Mm. Um, and that's where he was trained. I've been directed by you, and one of the amazing things that always astonished me about your directing is the amount of energy you have. You just you seem like you have a tireless, endless amount of energy. Is that a part of his uh, technique as well? Just Yeah, he was always incredibly energetic. He mm -hmm. was just, I think he laughed a lot less than me and probably was mm -hmm. less willing to accept the emotions because mm -hmm. I think how you feel about things, but the way an actor's feelings come out is okay, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I, got, I get huge amounts of energy from my imagination and when I'm working with 10 actors who all are using their imagination, mm -hmm. I, it's fabulous. It's mm -hmm. just the most rich, thrilling thing. I just can't get over it. I want the world to watch everything. Yeah. You know, I don't want to wait till opening night. Yeah, you're like a kid in a candy store. You know? That's exactly what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, oh my God, when we would just, you know, I never forget, it. you're mammals. You're mammals, you're under the water. You have to breathe. And I remember this, you have to breathe. So everybody had to try to find ways of having their anim or their underwater animal come up for air. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and then when you all did, when you all did that, I was like, 
oh my God, they're so much more exciting than I, ex than I realized they could be. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get my energy back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's fascinating. Uh, the, the production we did, of course, was Whale at YPT, which was a phenomenal production. You can't see it. Um, it was a revolutionary show, and you missed it. It was wonderful. Um, but also, too, I mean, I was in the show wishing I could see the show. That's one of the problems, isn't it? Uh -huh. I've taken now, when I'm in theater schools, I've taken to, to inviting the uh, students one at a time out uh -huh. to watch what their fellow students are doing. Because yeah, it's very hard for them to realize, yes, I'm in a clump. I'm in a heaving clump and we're all behaving like a lung. But, mm -hmm. but you know, what's the impact of this? You know, yeah. when this lung explodes across the stage. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I just pull people out to look because I realized that. But the audience comes and then they tell you. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. And now, you've not only worked in theatre, you've also worked in film and television. You've worked, of course, in Slings and Arrows, which is a fabulous series, of course. This is all from IMDb, which can be incorrect, I've learned from personal experience. But, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You were also in, of course, The Avonlea Christmas, um, Promise the Moon, which was a TV movie. And, uh, oh, Street Legal. You did a Street Legal. Uh, do you remember the street legal you did? I don't remember mine. No. No, I don't remember no. mine. I do not remember most of the stuff I did. I mm -hmm. did the Snow Queen, which I thought was thrilling and great fun to do. That was a right. CBC, BBC production. Mm -hmm. And I got to be this kind of weird woman from the north. You know, okay. Like, like, strange <laughs> accent. Oh, I love that kind of stuff. And it was blue screen. Mm -hmm. which is very, oh, green screen. Anyway, yeah. uh, the, the, the one, the, 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 the television experience that I had that was ongoing was the, um, uh, the Road to Avonlea, which, mm -hmm. and I was basically on and off for seven seasons in The Road to Avonlea. Mm -hmm. And that was like a theatre company. It was a huge number of theatre actors were in that. Yeah. And it was kind of, kind of wonderful. And it was a glorious thing to watch Sarah Polly grow up. Right, of and to watch her start to challenge us all with politically. As really? well, you know, to air the evolution of her personal politics as they exploded into the hair makeup room. It was fantastic. Really? Yeah. A really smart, intelligent, and dignified child growing up to be a, an unbelievably exciting and interesting artist. Mm, um, so that was lovely. But also, you know, Lala Kado and, like yeah. Cedric Smith, all those people. I just, and Jackie Burroughs. Mm -hmm. Oh, no flies on Jackie. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was just no way that she was going to let any injustice pass. No matter how small. <laughs> really? Yes. What's an example? Can you remember an example? Uh, <clears throat> it was usually to do with just the general way that she felt the actors were being treated, you know, uh, so that kind of thing. You know, when you're in a long series, you sometimes feel that you get less. You're putting out more, but you're getting less back. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a trend in long, t long series. Yes, of course. Yeah. And there's a sense of ownership as well, I'm sure. Oh, and you, oh, I had somebody come in wants to teach me how to do a bird call because my character Clara Potts was going to be doing the talent show and that you know mm -hmm. and, and and they said oh we've hired someone to come in and teach you how to do a bird call and I said excuse me I've got my own bird call send them away thank you oh. <laughs> and what was this bird call can you do it now um actually uh I invented a whole physicality so I actually started off like a bird so I was like that <laughs> and then I was actually more of a sort of a, um, I think it was, ah, 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 you know, that that's, kind of thing, right? That's amazing. You know, it was far more interesting than some tweet tweet thing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Um, you've worked with some amazing uh, people over the years. Uh, Larry Mullen, um, Barry Flatman, of course, your, your husband. Um, tell us about some of the, the people you've worked with, uh, either... Um, Oh, even uh, through a story theater in Vancouver. Uh, tell us Alan Alda kissed me. I beg your pardon? Yeah. My mom is jealous now. <laughs> My mom is very jealous of you right now. Um, in story theater, we actually worked with all these people, Valerie Harper, Alan Alda, Bob Dishy, and Richard Libertini. These are all people, some of whom became more famous than others. Mm -hmm. um, but they all said to me and Jeff, oh, you two are so much fun. Come down to, come down to L.A. and mm -hmm. you know, meet all our agents and we'll get you going because we did a, the whole season, Jeff and I. Right. Um, and uh, we said, no, we have to go back to Toronto workshop productions and now because we got married during that series because right. um, we've still got more work to do at Toronto workshops and we're going to start a family. But thank you anyway. Oh, so you never, so you could have gone down to L.A.? We were like invited by all these people that could have just carved their careers for us. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Well, I was just getting into Toronto, mm -hmm. and I was loving it. Mm -hmm. It was really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and um, but and so I wasn't. 
you know, and it was nice that these people are coming up from LA, but I'd already come to Canada and then going all the way over to BC to, to be in a TV series. I, I mean, I didn't feel there was stars in my eyes because we were so proud of the work that, that George trained us in. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, Jeff, he had to do like play this dog. And they just went like, oh my God, that actor's so good at being a dog, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So all these LA actors would go, wow, right? right you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, and then, um, yeah, Barry Flatman, who's a very busy working actor and does television and stage. He's been doing quite a lot of stage, actually, lately. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of, our, one of our teammates at Toronto Workshop Productions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was during the hippie days, so he had hair down to his elbows. And, yeah. Yeah, and he wore the same jeans, I think, for three months without taking them off. And so we actually staged an intervention. <laughs> we, we, bought, we bought Barry Flatman a new pair of jeans and staged a jean, you know, an intervention where we ripped off the old jeans and put the new jeans on him. <laughs> I wish I was there for that. I know. Barry, uh, we, uh, yeah, we still have a few old photographs of those, those days. It was great. You know? I kept those and Larry days. Mullen, um, he, went to, uh, he went to LA because they were homemade theatre. Larry, Barry, and mm. Phil Sabbath, they all created home made theatre, mm -hmm. which was a very going concern. It was a great, a wonderful improv group mm -hmm. that was in um, in uh, Toronto for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And then they all went off to be very successful people. Yeah. Lanny Mullins, a, a screenwriter in L.A. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you about Jennifer Phipps. <sighs> Jennifer Phipps. Well, when I got to be part of the St. Lawrence Centre Theatre Company, Jennifer Phipps reached out and was so kind to me. She was so good to the little actors who didn't know what they were doing, you know. I mean, because mm -hmm. St. Lawrence Centre was a really big stage, and they were they had real wigs and stuff, and they were, you know, I remember doing the rivals and, you know, wearing corsets and beautiful costumes, very different. I mean, we had great costumes at Toronto Workshop, but, but we owned the shows more, mm -hmm. whereas this was much more of an industry, and you were part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and you had separate little dressing rooms, so you didn't, you know, you had to knock on someone else's dressing room door to, to say hello Sorry. and stuff. Um, and um, so Jennifer Phipps was phenomenally good and kind to me and warm and really it was a re great company member and um, she taught me a couple of things that I thought were great f fun to know. When we had a huge company photograph taken, all of us, like there was, I must have been about 40, 50 of us, and Jennifer sat beside me and said, Maya, look and see what everybody else is doing just before they take the picture and then do the opposite. <laughs> that way you'll be noticed. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm glad I heard that story. That's and, exactly what I'm and then um, uh, she, she, I don't know if she's going to kill me for this, <laughs> but we did a play called um, The uh, Oh Geez. It was, anyway, it was a big epic Chinese play set in China. Mm -hmm. And Neil Monroe was in it. And, and Neil Monroe had to make his great big entrance. It was a great big entrance. He was a young warrior, right? Yeah. And Jenny and I had to be in the crowd scene. And uh, we were rehearsing forever, it was going on forever, and it was just like, oh. So Jenny said, Maya, let me stand really close to you, and if I have to take a little nap, just wake me up when the scene is over. And she would lean on me, and just get a little heavier and heavier, and then when the scene was over, I'd give her a little nudge, and she'd wake up and carry on. Nobody knew. <laughs> Nobody knew. I think she was even doing that during, you know, when the audience was there. She was so good. At, Jenny it was and is a magnificent actress. Mm -hmm. she, her, her senses, all five senses and more, are wide awake mm -hmm. all the time when yeah. she's working. She lives in the moment, this, this actress. Mm -hmm. We could all learn so much from her. Mm -hmm. Not just about how to take a nap on stage. <laughs> <laughs>